Welcome to Search for Adventure. I'm Rick Rossler, and my co-pilot today is the executive producer of Search for Adventure, Dr. Watson. We're flying over Mexico's thousand-mile-long peninsula, Baja, California. Those of you who have traveled to Baja know that this is one of those extraordinary places on Earth that yields adventure at every turn. Now, we've been flying for about three hours, so I'm going to land on a dry lake bed down there, take a break, and I'm going to tell you about our first adventure. Watson and I are on one of the largest dry lake beds in Baja, California. We're about 350 miles south of the border at Laguna Chapala. Those are the Sierras de San Borjas behind us, in case you're looking at a map. Our first adventure takes us another 150 miles south of here, near the oasis of San Ignacio. Now, just across the road from San Ignacio are the Sierras de San Francisco. This desolate mountain chain is part of the ancient backbone of the Baja. These mountains are scarred by deep canyons, whose sheer walls are pocked with large caves. Some of these caves contain one of the great mysteries of our hemisphere, ancient art that is painted so high on the walls that some of the locals believe it was painted by giants. Baja, California, a thousand miles long, covered with misty volcanic peaks and twisted cactus, claiming centuries of nomadic Indians, conquistadors, privateers, and adventurers, all seeking treasures from its land and sea. But today, a new kind of adventurer, intrigued by the legends and artifacts of Baja's primitive history, penetrates its hostile terrain in search of answers. Harry Crosby, historian and adventurer, has spent more than a decade researching and investigating one of Baja's most mysterious legends, giant paintings. Climbing the steep rocky trails under a hot tropic sun, this expedition travels for days through a mountain wilderness of deeply eroded volcanic outpourings. They carefully search the rugged slopes and steep walled canyons, looking for depressions or cave entrances that would protect a unique treasure from weather and wind. The hostile character of the land has offered the greatest deterrent to just anyone experiencing this unique treasure. Over 200 years ago, Jesuit missionary Jose Mariano Rotea viewed these amazing paintings. From top to bottom, the wall was all painted with various figures of men and women and animals. The colors were the same that we found in the nearby volcanoes, green, black, yellow, and flesh-colored. The Indians agreed that in very ancient times, there came from the north a group of men and women of extraordinary stature. This is indeed convincing, because without scaffolds or other implements, only giant men would have been able to paint at such a height. But Harry Crosby offers another, perhaps more plausible account. There's no reason to believe that the paintings were done by larger than life people. They had palms and knew how to fell them and split them. And they had the skeletons of Cardone cactus, which are very tall and light and could have been bound together to form scaffoldings that would account for the paintings at the heights of up to 30 feet that we see in the caves. Since the paintings are probably 1,000 to 2,000 years old, it's almost impossible to attribute them to any group of people that we can identify or name today. All the animals that we see in the paintings, and for that matter, obviously, men, fish, birds, and so forth, 
uh, as far as we can tell, are those that we find indigenous in the area today. All of the pigments that we see in these paintings are obviously are local. In fact, all of them can be found in the Tres Virgenes volcanoes that are located just 20 or 30 miles uh, east of the Sierra de San Francisco, where most of these paintings are located. As far as we know, they simply were very finely ground, mixed with water into a slurry, and then painted on the walls, probably with uh, fiber brushes. Perhaps one of the most unusual images appears to be wearing a sort of helmet, much like a spaceman. It's very apparent that there are headdresses on figures scattered throughout the range of the great mural paintings. And this may simply represent a local variant of whatever the headdress was worn by the shaman of the group of people that made the paintings. In this remote land of twisted bujums and jagged mountains, it must have taken special people to paint those giant figures. Just who those painters were remains one of the great mysteries of Baja California. When you're on the road driving one of our highways, do you ever wonder what interesting people or places may be just off the road? Well, thousands of people drive by the San Francisco mountains every week and yet have no idea of what romantic treasures they hold. That's why a little research before you go on a vacation or business trip may open up a whole new adventure for you. Well, now that we're nursing our saddle sores from our mule trip, it's time to dust off our cowboy hat. We'll be right back with our next adventure, The Town Too Tough to Die.